Hey, so I thought I'd post a quick update video kind of showing off uh, post market OS on the OnePlus 6 and sort of talking about where we're at. Um, I don't expect this to be very long, but you know, I now have a OnePlus 6, which I can actually daily drive, uh, which is new because up until now, my kind of daily drive phone is. Uh, has been this one which as you can imagine is is you know you can't keep it in your pocket so yeah um some wonderful person has uh, given me this one plus six which now i can actually use to run post market os all the time and not have to uh, reflash so this phone is uh, right now running post market os edge with the um linux 5.0 15 RC4 kernel, which is not yet available on post market OS, although I'm hoping that will change soon. We just have a, a few final bugs to fix. Um, here I'm using the, oops, uh, this is the post market OS OLED theme, which is brand new. You can go get it right now, and it is fantastic on a phone with an OLED display to have pure bat. Pure blacks is is really amazing. So, yeah, um, here it is. It looks great. I think. Uh, thank you very much to Martin who uh, worked on this. It only took him a few hours. Anyway, yeah. So, um, post market OS tweaks has been updated or will be updated um, to properly show off the processor and chipset in the one plus six where previously these were not correct it will also be gaining a setting uh here in Fosh. this move clock setting uh unfortunately it doesn't update instantly you have to restart Fosh for it to take effect but it will shift the clock over so that it is actually viewable unlike uh regularly where the notch obscures it completely um so yeah as you can see performance is pretty nice we can open applications quite quickly you can run commands like neofetch they are lots of fun um here i have spot which is a, a spotify app written in gtk3 so unless i'm mistaken there's no harder acceleration here but as you can see it's pretty much no effort to scroll through this big list of uh of music and even load in new stuff um i do actually have a local music collection but sublime music doesn't seem to be working nice anymore uh here is firefox with the youtube homepage open there is some input lag I think you can kind of see it here. I'm hoping this is something that we'll be able to address in the future. Um, but it's definitely worth noting. Although, other than that, the experience is pretty smooth. The performance is great. There is just some, some latency issues. And I think some of this uh, latency will be fixed with a patch to the OnePlus touchscreen driver. Uh, which will be included in the next kind of release if I can keep it in my head. So, yeah, I mean, if you own a Pine phone, you will be pretty used to what this experience is like. The OnePlus 6 is pretty much the same thing, but a lot faster. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> um, I've installed Bitwarden, which is great, but it it is very much not a native app. Um, it scales with even though uh the OnePlus Six has integer scaling in Fosh, Bitwarden is blurry, and that sucks. But it is certainly good enough to be able to copy my passwords. Um, it's a shame that the app doesn't have better native mobile support, but yeah, it mostly works well. Uh, megapixels, obviously, 
does nothing. Maybe that'll be something to change in the future. We shall see. But yeah, uh, one of the, the main reasons that I'm even making this video is actually to show off what someone uh, fantastic in the community has been working on, which is um, what will end up being an, a big improvement to TTY Escape. Um, for those who don't know, TTY Escape is a very neat little utility for dealing with uh, UI lockups, which, you know, I mean, a lot of this is testing software. It's not all that uncommon for Flash or even just squeak board to just freeze up and become unusable, requiring a reboot, which can really suck. So as a, as a bit of a workaround, I created this kind of uh, tool, I guess, called TTY Escape, where you, you hold volume down and then you press the power button three times and you get dropped into a TTY, uh, usually with FB keyboard, which you may or may not be familiar with. It's like a blue and red uh, frame buffer keyboard, but this is what is coming. Um, this is called Buffy board and it's a brand new frame buffer keyboard written from scratch using LVGL. Um, in order to make this, the author created a tool called squeak to LVGL, which takes the squeak board layout. Squeak board is the keyboard that's used in Fosh and converts them to a full bit, uh, converts them to a format which can be used here. So this keyboard is actually the same layout that you find in Squeakboard, and it should remain that way indefinitely. Um, this thing is really, really amazing to use. Uh, maybe I can oh, get this in focus a little bit better. Or not. I'm a huge, huge fan of how this keyboard has turned out. And just, just having a TTY with this really, really amazing keyboard at the bottom is honestly a bit of a dream come true for me. Um, I'm really, really excited to see this get packaged. As you can see, this, this kernel has a lot of problems right now, but don't worry. Yeah, we'll be getting those fixed and There'll be more news soon. Um, I will write an update post for my blog to uh, kind of document where we're at when 5.15 uh, launches for this device in post market OS, and we will catch up and kind of see what the future holds. I'm really, really looking forward to it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this quick overview. Uh, obviously, to get out of TTY Escape, you just do the same thing again. And you get put back into FOSH. Um, your FOSH session is not cleared or anything. Uh, all my apps are still here and open, which is really, really nice. Although, obviously, you know, if FOSH crashed and you went to a TTY and restarted it, it does close your apps. But I still think being able to go to a TTY on your phone and use it is absolutely amazing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this kind of very quick overview of the UI and, and a brief update on the OnePlus 6. I'll see you next time.